The fundamentals of trigonometry. Trigonometry is a huge topic in pure math. So to make sure that you have a very strong foundation, let's go through the absolute basics. So firstly, triangle, three angles. Triangles have three angles and three sides. So let's go into more detail about the angles. The first thing you should know is that all angles in a triangle add up to 180, no matter the type of triangle, isosceles, equilateral, things like that. It does not matter. As long as it's a triangle, those three angles will add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so let's go through the types of angles. The first one is an acute angle. This is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees, and it looks like kind of like an inequality, an inequality sign. So like this. The most important one in this topic is the right angle. And you know that because of the right angle triangle, right? We'll move on to that just now. So the right angle is 90 degrees, and they're like two perpendicular lines like this. The third is the obtuse angle, and that's between 90 and 180 degrees. The straight angle is just a straight line, can be like this, like this. It's a straight line, and it is 180 degrees. A reflex angle is between 180 and 360 degrees. And also, remember, this is 360 degrees, right? So a circle, like that. So if you go all the way around, it's 360 degrees. So complementary angles are next, and these are two angles that add up to 90 degrees. So these two angles are complementary because they add up to 90 degrees. And supplementary angles are two angles that add up to 180 degrees. So these two angles are supplementary angles. Now let's move on to the units of angular measurement. So in English, the things that we use to measure angles. So you're familiar with degrees. However, we also need to add to our bank of knowledge radians, okay? So one huge thing that you need to know how to do is switch from degrees to radians on your calculator and be aware of what unit your calculator is in, degree or radians, because it's very important, it's crucial. Depending on the question you are asked, they might specify what you might have to calculate it in. Even if they don't, make sure you specify what you're calculating in, okay? Because they give completely different answers. So the conversion is 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. So one radian is equal to 57.2958 degrees. You don't need to know that one but the, they're basically based around this one. So what is trigonometry? The Greek words trigonon metron translate into English to mean triangle measure. So it's all about triangles. However, more specifically, one type of triangle, the right angle triangle. So trigonometry is the study of the relation between sides and angles of a right angle triangle, okay? And we can find unknown dimensions using formulas and identities based on this relationship. So everything in this topic is connected and that's the beauty of it. So everything you learn will be connected to something else. So that's why it's important to learn from the absolute beginning. Okay, so firstly, let's examine the right angle triangle. What we have on the screen here is a typical right angle triangle. And the first thing we do need to realize is there's a right angle. So to notice that there's a right angle, we look for this little box, okay? And of course, the perpendicular lines like this. So this is a 90 degree angle. A right angle is a 90 degree angle. And we need to be familiar with three special components, okay? So these components are the hypotenuse, the opposite side, and the adjacent side. And how do we identify these things? So firstly, the hypotenuse is the longest side, okay? And it also, be ha it also happens to be opposite from the right angle, okay? So the hypotenuse is the longest diagonal and it's opposite to the right angle, okay? Now this little guy here is called theta and theta is a Greek letter. So it can be A, B, C, D, however, most times you'll see theta, okay? So all it does is indicate an angle. So it denotes an angle is there. So this is an angle. And to get opposite and adjacent, we look at the position of theta, okay? So opposite to theta would be the opposite side, and next to theta, that would be the adjacent side. So what if theta was on this side? Then the opposite to this theta, well, let's call this like A for now. So A, the opposite to A, this would be the opposite side instead, and this would be the adjacent side instead, okay? so. Pay attention to those and the positions of everything. They all come together in the end. 
Sine, cosine, and tangent, more formally known as sine, cos, and tan, are the main trigonometric functions used. Okay, so these are ratios. So when you divide one side of a right angle triangle by another, you get these functions, and these are ratios. But one thing you do need to note is no matter the size of the triangle, it doesn't matter. That would not change the ratio. The only thing that would change the ratio is the angle itself. So if you change the angle, that's when the ratio will change. Okay, so what would we use these functions for? There are two main uses. The first one being to calculate angles when we know sides. Okay, and the second one being to calculate sides when we know angles. So we always have at least one piece of information that we get to work with to be able to find out the rest, okay? So how do we derive these functions in the first place? That's where our lovely acronym kind of thing comes in, SOKATOA. So SOKATOA helps us remember what these things actually mean. So sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So, so sine opposite hypotenuse. Cos is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, ka, and tan is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is toa. Okay, so that's how we're going to remember these trigonometric functions. Also, note that tan is equal to sine theta over cos theta. I just put that in there because it's very important to know, so just try to remember it now. Pythagoras' theorem. One thing you need to note, though, is that Pythagoras' theorem is only applicable to right-angled triangles, so you need to ensure that whatever you're working with is in fact a right-angled triangle, otherwise what you're going to do is completely and utterly incorrect, okay? So, firstly, let's understand where this all came from. About 200, no, 2,000 years ago, the man himself, Pythagoras, he realized that when a triangle has a right angle, 90 degrees, and squares are made on each of the three sides. So let's say one, two, three. Okay, so we have three squares. Then the biggest square has the same area as the other two put together. So what they're saying is that this square, the area of this square is equal to this one plus this one. Okay, so in more formal language, in a right angle triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So in an equation, this is what it would look like, C being the hypotenuse, and you make sure to square all of them, okay? So if we know the length of any two sides, we can use this to find the length of the third side. And how would we do that? We would use this equation and transpose to find the side we want to find. So we do that by solving algebraically, okay? So this is used to represent the relationship between the sides of triangle, because like I said, everything is connected. Let's take a look at this example now, okay? So it says, given that sine theta is equal to 3 over 5, find the value of cos theta. Okay, so what information can we gather from this already? We have sine and cos, two functions. We have to use sine theta is equal to 3 over 5 to get cos theta. Okay, so we're given one piece of information and we have to find the next. So let's state what we know already. So we know sine theta is equal to 3 over 5. And we can draw a right angle triangle to represent this information. Okay, so let's see. This will have 3 over 5. And why, why is it 3 on this side? Because sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And this is opposite. And the hypotenuse, of course, is the longest one opposite to the right angle. So we have 3 and 5. And to get cos theta, we need the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we have the hypotenuse already. We just need to find the adjacent over here. And how would we do that? We would use Pythagoras' theorem. So we have c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Let's let b squared equal to, well, let's let b, sorry, equal to 3 because 5, c is equal to 5 because C is the hypotenuse. Remember, whatever these two sides are equal to is the hypotenuse. So we have to try solve for A, which we can then use to get cos theta, okay? So we did that. We transpose to get A over here, and now we can say cos theta is equal to four over five. 
And why is that? Because we know cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And we know that hypotenuse was 5 already. And we had to use the information from sine and from the triangle itself to go and get the adjacent, which happened to be 4. So cos theta is equal to 4 over 5. Given these trigonometric functions, we can find expressions for their reciprocals. So we need to know the reciprocals of sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta. 1 over sine theta being equal to cosec theta, 1 over cos theta being equal to sec theta, and 1 over tan theta being equal to cot theta. And how are we going to remember this? I'll tell you. So we have to look at the third letter of each and every one of these. And we need to notice that the third letter is actually the same to their respective functions. So S and S, C and C, T and T. Okay, so that's how we're going to remember them. Also, you need to know that 1 over tan theta is equal to cos theta over sine theta. Very important to know. Now let's have a look at the notation for the inverse of trigonometric functions. So firstly, what you need to know is that the inverse and the reciprocal are not the same, okay? So this is the reciprocal and this is the inverse, okay? So let's look at the notation. So this is called arc sine, this is called arc cos, and this is called arc tan, okay? So they're denoted with a little minus one in the top right hand corner and that signifies that it is the inverse we're dealing with, okay? Next up, super important. We're going to touch on trigonometric identities a little. Of course, later on, we'll have to go on in a lot more detail, but these three are actually very important. So you have to learn them because they're the basis of a lot of things in the future, you'll find out, okay? So learn these three, and now we're going to learn how to prove them. The first identity that we need to know is sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. And this is the basis of a lot, so please remember this one. Let's begin the proof. So we're going to begin with the right angle triangle and we're going to assign the hypotenuse opposite side and adjacent side letters. Okay, so these variables are going to represent these sides. So z is the hypotenuse, x is the opposite side, and y is the adjacent side because of the positioning of theta, of course. So we notice we have to deal with two functions, sine and cos. So let's begin with them. We know that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse and cos is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So let's substitute them with their respective variables. So opposite is x and hypotenuse is z. Adjacent is y and hypotenuse is z. Okay, so now we have to get them into this form. So the first thing we're going to do is square both sides because when we square this side you're going to have to square this as well to make sure the equal sign holds up okay so sine squared theta is equal to x squared on z squared and cos squared theta is equal to y squared on z squared and now we have to add them up and of course if we add up the left hand sides we must add up the right hand sides as well so we're going to end up with this equation all right so now you can see that the denominators are the same so we can automatically bring them together. And you need to remember that z is the hypotenuse. Okay, so z squared. And by Pythagoras' theorem, we know that z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And that's how we can replace it like this. Okay, so we're here now. And we know that x squared plus y squared over x squared plus y squared is going to be equal to 1. So we know that, in fact, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1, as they said above here. Okay, so QED. The second identity that we're going to prove is tan squared theta plus 1 is equal to sec squared theta. But we need to know some things that we learned before. We need to recall that information. So the first one is tan theta is equal to sine over cos and sec theta is equal to 1 over cos. So we're going to use these. Now, we're going to begin this proof using the first identity actually, which is sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. Okay, and we're going to begin by dividing throughout by cos squared theta. So let's do that. So dividing throughout means divide each and every term by cos squared theta. 
All right, so when we do that, we notice we have sine squared theta over cos squared theta, and we have the power two in common. And when we have the power two in common, we can pull it out by the laws of indices, okay? So we'll end up with something looking like this. And then we have these two that cross each other out, of course, and we have equal to one. Okay, now we have one over cos squared theta, and we can take out the square here as well, because one squared is equal to one, we know that. So we could take out the square there, okay? So when we do that, we know that sine over cos is equal to tan, and one over cos is equal to sec, as in the information we recalled above. And now we know that this is in fact equal to this, QED. QED, I think, means quad erat demonstrandum. I'm not sure if I said that correctly, but that's what QED means. A lot of people just put a box or hence proven. Okay, so at the end of your proof, you can put either one of these three. The final identity that we're going to prove now is 1 plus cot squared theta is equal to cosec squared theta. But we need to recall some information to be able to do so. Because as I said, you know that all of this is connected. So to be able to derive this, we use a lot of the information that we learned before. Okay, so the first thing we need to recall is that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. The second one is cot theta is equal to 1 over tan theta. And finally, cosec theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. And where do we all begin? We begin with the, the first identity, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. Okay, so we're going to divide throughout by sine squared theta. And when I say divide throughout, we're going to divide each and every term by sine squared theta. Okay? So when we do that, these cross out so we get 1. Then we can take out the power 2 by the laws of indices, like so. And the last is 1 over sine squared theta. And we know 1 squared is equal to 1. So we can pull out the squared as well, okay, and put them in brackets. So now we need to know that cot theta is actually equal to cos theta over sine theta. And how did we get there? Because we know that cot theta is equal to 1 over tan theta, and that's equal to 1 over sine theta over cos theta, okay? So when we have 1 over sine theta over cos theta, we're going to see 1 over sine theta over cos theta. So that will be multiplied by cos theta over sine theta. And that's how we ended up with this one, okay? So that's actually the proof itself for cot theta being equal to cos theta over sine theta, okay? So that's how we derived it. But in the exam, you just need to know in your brain <laughs> that cot theta is in fact equal to cos theta over sine theta. You don't have to prove that one. That one is one you should know, all right? So we get to substitute it, put that there. So we have that there, and we know that 1 over sine theta is equal to 1, well, sorry, 1 over sine theta is equal to cosec theta. So we substitute it, now we have the squares left, and of course, we get the answer. QED.